Yo, welcome back. Uh, is the guest for tonight's edition of the program and in the person of uh, the former DG, uh, former CEO of NEC, uh, in the person of uh, Dr. Uh, Sam Amadi. Uh, Dr. Amadi, you're welcome to the studio. Thank you. Yeah. All right, before we engage you in a conversation, let's take uh, uh, the first two reports. As discussions and meetings intensify on the proposed uh, tariff increase by electricity distribution companies, operators of small and medium scale enterprises in Lagos are asking the discos to, and the regulatory agencies to reconsider the decision, adding that its effect on their businesses will be intense. Annie Daniels has that report. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission NEC in its December 2019 minor review of multi-year tariff order 2015 announced that there will be electricity tariff increase come April 2020. Reasons for the increase, the commission says, is to bridge the revenue shortfalls in the sector. The issue of repairs, uh, people even contributing money to buy their poor is a shame and will regret it. But those things continue because the product is not being sold at the appropriate price. The step has, however, remained condemned by virtually every electricity consumer across board. We only base on generator for 24 hours. They don't have to drive people around, cut their life before they get their money. But since you have decided not to give people prepared meter, they keep on tapping your lights. You keep on carrying ladder up and down. Respondents further explained that with the already biting economic situation in the country, increasing electricity tariff will adversely affect the outputs of both small and medium scale businesses in Lagos, a city best described as Africa's commercial hub. Now that they have not increased the business, the light is affecting businesses. It, not the talk of they come to increase it. I also pay tax for the electricity one way or the other through VAT and other things. When I go to, to my baba shop from 500 and he has already increased everything to about 1,000 or so. In spite of meetings between electricity distribution position. Any increase in tariff without uh, concomitant uh, commitment to metering is potentially problematic and would uh, again exploit consumers as it is. Whatever that electricity, I mean, eco electricity distribution company has made today, we will go back to Abuja, sit down, and these contributions will be the some of the things we will look into before arriving at our decision on the application. While the battle continues, business operators in the metropolis insist that reasons for the proposed electricity tariff increase has nothing to do with the end users, especially when several businesses are still gasping for breath. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. Electricity consumers in Kano State are already apprehensive over the planned increase in the tariff, describing the move as an economic setback capable of causing more hardships on consumers and also likely to have devastating effects on the manufacturing sector. The Hanasu Hassan Barra reports that this is the general consensus among consumers who appeal to the federal government to halt the withdrawal of the intervention in this sector. Kano is not an exception as its economy also depends largely on energy, which provides a platform for the establishment of small, medium and large-scale industries. Investigations, however, reveals that even with the privatization of the country's power sector and the introduction of the prepared meter by the distribution companies, which is meant to bring some form of relief, people are still groaning under outrageous billing and incessant Outage 42-year-old Abdulaziz is among the many Kano residents who depend on power as a source of livelihood and is already apprehensive of the planned increase in electricity tariff. I'll not be really happy because most of us will even decide to allow them to disconnect our lights so that we'll be using our generator really because it's even, it's even more safer for us because it's not helpful at all really. Even if they bring a light the uh, low current. While management of Kano Electricity Distribution Company on its part attributed non-payment of electricity bills by consumers as one of the many factors 
inhibiting effective service delivery. We want customers to look at and everybody to understand that if you, the liquidity, the money, the tariff is the only way you get money to the entire value chain. If people, if there's more money within the sector, there will be more improvement in upgrading of network, the issue of metering, and the power will become more, more reliable. Increase in inputs of production will definitely uh, affect the prices of uh, goods and services. People of vested interest are, however, advocating for the harmonization of electricity charges across the country rather than increasing the tariff. In Kano, Johannes Asambaro reporting for Weekend Fire. Thank you, and back to Abuja here. Um, I have our guest, uh, Dr. Sam. Amari, there are some, all things being equal, the new uh, tariff regime on electricity takes effect uh, from the 1st of uh, April 2020. What's your take on that? Well, I think um, uh, the regulator structured it well. Uh, I think in January there was this news about tariff increase uh, and they said they froze it for a while, just like we did when we were there, uh, to allow for consultation. And I think um, what's going on now with all the feedback from consumers and uh, operators is the way you run the sector. You want to create some degree of democracy. And we know that where there's that kind of you know, engagement, tariffs usually you know, will be more cost efficient and prudent and efficient in the sense that uh, consumers who confront operators with allegations or, or, or reports, feedback about poor services. So what we are seeing here is robust conversation. I think next should deepen that consultation, which is what the regulation requires, meaning that you allow the, regulate, the operators prove why they need those uh, tariffs. But I think it sets it up well, uh, maybe before April, uh, from evidence we produce and uh, insights, the regulator I now see what should be approved and what should not be approved. Again, you need greater rigor in terms of looking at the cost, looking at the real fa the data that's coming from the regulator, uh, from the operator. Oftentimes, regulators don't have all the Cost are difficult to discover, and therefore the regulator need to have optimal tools to really discover those costs, and then think about how to pass it to the consumer. So this the structure they are put in place in terms of consultation is a good one. It needs more rigor, more public participation, and then of course at the end of the day you need to look back and take a very strategic first as a science based on cost effect tariff is a science, but it's also an art. You look at the economic profile, look at a lot of social welfare losses. Under consumption by the poor, for example, will result in uh, loss of productivity and also loss of social welfare. And if you look at where we are on the poverty trajectory, on that consumption arising from a, a high tariff impact on both SMEs that are drivers of economic growth will also impact. So essentially, it's a balancing act. You make sure that the, the operators have the revenue, they need to improve the system and uh, unlock investment. But at the same time, you want to ensure that citizens have uh, adequate consumption because it's important for social, for peace, for, e for economic growth, and also for social welfare, especially in an era where we are dealing with uh, excess poverty. Now, of great interest to observers is the fact that uh, they're saying that even if the increase becomes effective, that it does not necessarily guarantee, you know, adequate water supply, uh, adequate uh, uh, power awesome. supply. And again, because of, uh, you know, death of infrastructure in this sector, that uh, the increase will not necessarily, you know, uh, change anything, you know, in terms of uh, power supply. And the problem with uh, tariff increase, and I've argued that the tariff increase is not sustainable long-term way of improving the sector. The problem with uh, tariff increase is that first is that the worst hit will be mostly omitted customers. And that's why NEC has rightly brought out the capping you know, proposal. It helps to reduce the exposure of omitted customers. Omitted Co customers can you know, c conserve energy and reduce their consumption. The second problem is that in the short to medium term, you, the, the kind of financial inflow that you need to improve investment to improve the in network may not happen. Again, we're dealing with limited capacity both in generation, limited capacity both in, of course, uh, generation is slightly better than distribution, of course, transmission is slightly better. But all this may not necessarily translate in the short to medium term to very significant improvement in service. So that's the problem. Then, but it's a time lag. The question then is, what can you do? Are you going to allow this tariff to remain at a level that will further destroy the potential of the operators to serve you? So it's like a, a double whammy. It's, it's a vicious circle. If you don't improve 
to uh, constrain capacity to produce and to supply better service. Again, you, uh, the real crisis here in this sector is lack of adequate supply. Price is a crisis, but if you put them together, people want to see more electricity, and they're going to see more electricity except there's more investment. So quick question is, how can you stimulate that level of investment that will go also with a level of return to operators that will be sustainable? I think Nick also right in saying we can face this. Okay, that we just discussed talking about four years, and this next says okay by 2021 or thereabout we can now or 2022 we can now have fully cost reflected. So this increase will not be an increase that obviously gives too much rate shock. Increase rate will be too high. It will be an increase that perhaps is managed in a way that uh, the federal government can step in and take some of the you know some of the losses you know, for fund those losses and allow the discourse to at least get something, but not so much as to punish the consumer. Again, metering is key here. Mm -hmm. If consumers are metered, then they have, you know, of, of cost recovery, uh, cost efficient tariff. But essentially, I think it's difficult to solve. No supply and high pricing. It creates a major challenge for consumers. But if you don't deal with the good pricing, then you may not unlock the investment needed for improvement. All right, uh, just uh, last question on this particular segment. The nation is grappling with the issue of metering, which you mentioned a short while ago. And uh, one of the respondents in the report that came from Lagos was saying that, look, any increase without adequate metering, you know, is a, is, is, is a fallacy. Then you were as neck, as, as, as chairman. Sure. What is this issue of metering? It's financing. Metering is a long-term investment and you recover small. So the, the operators ought to borrow money and invest in the long term. But they said they don't have that kind of access to fund because they're over leveraged. They, they bought asset with, with borrowed funds so they can't borrow that much. Second is logistics of deployment. But I think that can be dealt with. So when we're next, we try to do cap me. Now what should be done? I think the federal government perhaps should consider to move the investment they're giving to the discourse into metering. So we can treat metering like a social service, okay? Government procure meter for or do an audit of even an anti uh, poverty intervention instead of giving money to discos, provide those meters and then allow the discos to charge a tariff that is now close to cost efficient or even cost efficient. What that does is that you allow citizens to now conserve power, they can reduce their consumption. You can also have a two tiered price so that at some basic level, small price, and as you go higher, you pay more. We really need to provide revenue, but I think government can stop funding this call, you know, to deal the losses and provide meter and allow this calls to charge tariffs that are reasonable. So metering is essentially a problem of long investment. In 2012, I did the first metering inquiry. I discovered that by 2012, we had about 60% of metered customers. So from 19, 1896, when we had the first grid power, mm -hmm. to 2012, we, we had about 60% of our customers on meter. Better. Today, it's about 60 or 55% on meter. So it's a legacy crisis, okay. and to solve it requires massive public financing at the level of social service, and they allow the discourse charge to tariff. All right, we'll pause here at the moment and take uh, two more reports before we go on a break. Now, Edo State is a host to the 461 megawatts Azura Edo power plant, the 55 megawatts uh, Osiomo uh, power plant, and the headquarters of the Benin Electricity Distribution Company. Um, how has there have these critical power assets translated into a robust electricity supply in the area and what will be the uh, proposed upward adjustment in tariff mean uh, to businesses and the people of Gochukuka Ona has the report. Azura Edo independent power plant with a total proposed capacity of 1,500 megawatts has the first phase of three open cycle gas turbines totaling 461 megawatts already in operation since May 2018, delivering up to 10% of the country's on-grid power. Work on the 55 megawatts Osiomo power plant in Olubo is at an advanced stage with the first phase of 10 megawatts nearing completion, installation of transmission equipment, transformers, cables and supply lines are on and when completed is to supply electricity to public offices and utilities government-owned hospitals, streetlights, and other government establishments, including the Benin Industrial and Enterprise Park, to drive the Electrify Edo project. We could see a lot of work being done at Supply Road. Uh, they are doing a lot of wiring from the bypass going to the town. If that uh, project should come up, we want to be able to cross over. For now, the people say they are expectant 
as the Benin Electricity Distribution Company adopts the rationing method in the state. There is a modern way to provide electricity. It's called acoustic. Ikoba Dam should be enough for, for the whole of Benin City. You are not enjoying lights. At night, we don't see light. There is heat. The TC National Grid presently gives us between 300 to 350 megawatts, which is not enough to service customers in our area of coverage. Once there's an increase in tariff, that means the service provider is able to get more revenue to be able to give you improved and better services. The people are hopeful that with the efforts already being made in the sector at the federal and state levels, the situation of power will improve. Ogotuka Ona for Weekend Fire. As the federal government collaborates with the relevant stakeholders in the power sector to establish an equitable tariff rate, key players in River State have appealed for improved power supply and availability of prepaid meters to end the estimated billing system. Ijoma Ugweke reports. Lack of access to energy has continued to be a recurring issue in most parts of the country. About 40% of the population does not have access to electricity, as the electrification rate in Nigeria stands at 55% in urban and 36% in rural areas. As the country grapples to generate, transmit and distribute electricity, the review on electricity tariff has become necessary to improve service delivery of distribution companies. We'll be talking about uh, customer satisfaction, reduction in the estimated uh, billing system, network expansion, stroke, uh, rehabilitation. If you look at uh, some of the network which was inherited from the Hitato PSN, some of them are aging. Of course, it requires money to rehabilitate those lines. And the, the money can only come through uh, the fifth man in the value chain, which is the customer. Other respondents are of the view that the review on the tariff requires imputes from different stakeholders. This will ensure that customers are not subjected to high electricity rates, which in turn gives rise to non-payment of bills, meter bypassing, and other challenges that hinders efficient operations of service providers. Considering that Nigerians are paying so much taxes and this period the economy is not really stable. To ensure that uh, proper modalities are set, stakeholders should be involved, stakeholders should be engaged. No light, they will use hand and write it. Is it good? It's not good. So Look at me, how many rooms? Only two rooms they are put writing 10,000. They, however, appealed for the availability of prepaid meters to put an end to the estimated billing system. In Port Harcourt, Ijomu Weke, NTN News. Thank you, Ijomu. We'll take another break. Uh, when we return, uh, the program continues. <laughs> channel where you watch just now don't work huh? no panic tell me no panic you go do it by yourself like abc oh yeah press the menu button on top of your remote scroll up and down till you see information central then press ok mm, press ok check the signal strength and quality if the signal strength and quality pass 70 make you press the exit button go back go advanced options then choose installation then go to reset and press ok yeah, press ok yeah. Wow, now you safe fit catch all those channels with the one miss road by yourself. <laughs> yes, make your groove for no loss. You see as I do, I'm a bit. Hmm? And I see as I do, I'm. Go TV. Live it. Love it. And I see as we do, I'm. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. The delicious combination of rich cocoa and wholesome goodness of milk. Just add hot water to get an instant chocolatey treat. Cadbury Hot Chocolate 3 in 1. Just add hot water. Available in stores at 18 naira. Think about them. No beauty cloth. This sewing machine they make. If you put food for your table and roof over person head. Can you go on Bonke fashion show around the world? Find the cocoa inside every story. Go bbc.com slash pigeon to see more of your world. What is classic? 
Classic is Rivaldo, it's Ronaldo, it's Ronaldinho, it's Zidane, it's Messi, Hazard. Classic is a work of art. It's explosive goals. Absolute brilliant composure. And smooth passes. What a story. Classic is when you catch all this football action with the best digital picture quality. This is El Clasico. It's as classic as it gets, only on GoTV. Upgrade or stay on GoTV Max to catch two of the world's most notorious rival clubs in the world. Real Madrid versus Barcelona. On the 1st of March on Supersport Select 4. GoTV. Live it. Love it. Sam Amadi is still here with us. Now, the, the issue of uh, tariff increase, will that in any way solve the problem of uh, unutilized uh, megawatts that have been generated? Because of, we often hear that we have about 10,000 megawatts generated and uh, we are transmitting less than seven. So, why, how would this uh, be of help? Well, it's to the extent that um, the revenue f arising from increased tariffs perhaps will help uh, the discourse to invest more in their network because some of those constrained power, stranded power as we call it, uh, because uh, the discourse don't have the, uh, they're not, they don't have the capacity in terms of network availability to take, receive the, that number of power. So sometimes that shows that the TCN wants to drop power in this at this spot, these schools don't have capacity to pick it at that point and they want it to drop close to themselves. Other times they are not even able to, because of the weakness of the network, they're not able to get those power they need and um, it affects the generators themselves who will be asked to, st to reduce their generation because you can't produce power that cannot be consumed and therefore paid for. That's also part of why the tariff is high in some cases because losses are, are, are huge arising from those uh, that generation transmission failures and power not utilized. So we have some degree of uh, uh, megawatts available that should have served you know, public use and consumers would have had more electricity, but because the, the, the investment, the infrastructure in the network, especially for the disco side, is insufficient. So that's the argument also for tariff increase, that perhaps, you know, with this tariff increase, more investment in the network, more uptime, meaning the time that the network is up, and the greater the degree of power, uh, more power come to the home, because the Jijenkos will get paid, and then they will also even recover more capacity. Essentially, this the whole value chain suffers for lack of revenue. But the argument is, is it strategic to focus too much of this revenue from, in the short term, from high tariff increase? My argument is that there's a limit to how much tariff increase can help you address those liquidity crises. Perhaps investment, more opportunity for investment will help, but a good tariff, a sensible tariff, a pattern, you see, it's important that NEC is allowed to do the tariff because if they sh show bankability, show certainty in the way you, the NEC manages the tariff process, then you incentivize investment to come in. Investors know that they will not recover all their money now, but they want to see certainty, they want to see a process that is bankable, regulatory certainty, mm -hmm. that this process, even the regulator constrained the tariff, they will unlock it at the time. Okay. So it's always good not to have political intervention in tariff setting because it allows this because the regulator will not give you all the tariff. I'm sure NEC will constrain some part of this tariff yeah. because they're going to look at ability, ability to pay, they're going to look at whether it's fair and just. Just means you deserve it. Fair is can they pay? Can they pay? Exactly. Okay. All right, uh, Dr. Salman, I'd like to we'll stop you here uh, because time is on our side again. Uh, thank you for your thoughts and your time. Uh, Dr. Salman Madi uh, was uh, once uh, CEO and chairman of uh, NEC, the regulatory agency uh, for the power sector. Thank you once again. This is We Can File. We'll take another break. Hey, John, your love guest. All right, I do believe in love at first sight. I just think it's not possible. You know, as a man, you move by what you see. My love at first sight is a mental connection. Personally, don't want someone really shorter than I am. Guys really don't pick up on things like that sometimes, and I'm guys. My goal here yeah, is to find love. I just like them average, light skin. My move button is just showing me too much love. You might be the most beautiful woman in the world, but if your nails are not straight and clean, I ain't doing with you. Bad Bad breath, bad odors of any kind. I'm the mumu naturally, so. Ah, I'll be gone. I'll be a mumu for life. I love attention. Maybe food. I want to try again. If a woman is like my heaven, like she gives me peace, I'm good. I was at the point of getting married or my dad didn't approve of the relationship. It's me and my mom. I want someone that's a little bit taller than I am and muscular. I think you actually have to know a person to a certain degree before you say you're in love with them.
Lassa fever occurs when a person gets bitten by a rat carrying the Lassa virus. It is also contacted through the consumption of foods that have been contaminated by either the saliva, urine, or excreta of the rats. Lassa fever is deadly, so protect yourself and loved ones from it. Keep rats away from your homes. Ensure that leftover foods are properly covered at night and heat up properly before consumption. Wash fruits properly before you eat. Maintain regular hand wash with soap and water as well as environmental sanitation. Report all feverish conditions and bleeding from the nose or mouth to the health facility nearest to you and don't indulge in self-medication. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA. With profound sense of loss but gratitude to God for a life well spent, the Datong Longjan family announces the passing of its beloved husband, father, uncle, senator, and elder statesman, distinguished Senator Ignatius Datong Longjan, on the 10th of February 2020, following a brief illness. Senator Ignatius Longjan represented Plateau South Senatorial District in the current Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He had served in the Ministry of External Affairs as a diplomat. Senator Longjan was elected Deputy Governor Plateau State from 2011 to 2015. He is survived by a wife, three children, three grandchildren, and many relations. A vigil mass holds on Sunday, 1st March 2020 at St. Louis Catholic Church, draws by 6 p.m., while the Requiem Mass follows on Monday, 2nd March 2020 by 9 a.m., also at St. Louis Church, draws. Then departure to his hometown, Kwa, in Kwanpan local government area of Plata State for internment, Dr. Gurumwal George Longjan, son for the family. And now Pauls, NTA promises uh, teaming viewers of the best coverage of events at Edo 2020 National Sports Festival as the host broadcaster. Gift George has this and more on Sports Update. <laughs> 